Number one, in DaVinci Resolve, when you place a transparent video or transition over another clip, the background often looks a little darker. I noticed this after adding a transparent transition on top of my footage. The entire video stayed dimmer and the effect continued until the very end. If you check frame by frame, the darkening becomes very clear. This problem happens because of how DaVinci Resolve handles alpha channels and blending when multiple transparent clips are stacked. The good news is that the fix is simple. In the media pool, right-click on your transparent video, select Change Alpha Mode and switch it to Straight. As soon as you do this, the background will return to its proper brightness. The only drawback is that you have to repeat this step for every transparent clip. Number two, real-time transform not working. If your transform controls are not working in DaVinci Resolve and changes are not showing in real time, then here is the fix. Normally when you select a clip and go to the Inspector tab, any adjustment you make to position, zoom or rotation should instantly appear in the viewer, but sometimes the values only update after you hit play. This means you keep changing numbers without knowing what the actual result looks like, and that can be frustrating because you are working in the dark. The main reason this happens is because the dynamic zoom option is enabled. Many times you might have turned it on earlier and later, forgotten to switch it off, and once it is active, it overrides your manual transform settings. To solve this, turn off the dynamic zoom controller from here. Don't worry, it won't turn off the dynamic zoom. The moment you do that, your transform changes will start showing immediately in real time and you will also see the updates while the video is playing. This small step can save you a lot of confusion and make editing smoother because now you can see exactly what is happening as you adjust the values. The next one is hard to find keyframes. Now in this video clip, I have added some keyframes on the opacity to make it fade. Just simple two keyframes. If you open the keyframe tab from here, it will display every available property, even the ones where no keyframes have been applied. This makes it confusing because I only added keyframes to the opacity, but still I have to scroll through all the other parameters just to locate them. When you are working on multiple clips, this can waste a lot of time. Luckily, there is a simple fix inside the keyframe tab itself. To do that, just click on the three dot menu in the corner and choose display parameters with keyframes. Once you select this option, the panel will refresh and display only the properties that actually have keyframes hiding the rest. You can also apply the same setting in the timeline keyframe view by clicking on the three dots and enabling the same option. Now you can easily see and adjust the keyframes without extra clutter. The next one is how to change the background color. In this video, I have a clip moving upward and behind it we can see the checkerboard which represents transparency. Sometimes this checkerboard is useful, but other times it makes it difficult to work, especially when you do not need transparency. Luckily, DaVinci Resolve lets you change it very easily. All you have to do is click on the Viewer options and select Viewer Background. Here, you will see four choices and you can pick any one of them. For example, if you select Black, then wherever the video is transparent, it will now appear black instead of the checkerboard. You can also switch to other colors like red, which can be helpful when you are adjusting transforms and need a solid contrast to check the spacing properly. This makes it easier to notice small changes which might be hard to see on a checkerboard pattern. At the moment, Resolve only gives you two, three fixed colors along with the checkerboard, but most likely in a future update, they may also add custom color support. Until then, these options are enough to make editing clearer. You are not able to add any video or audio track into the timeline. If I click and drag this clip, you can see that only the audio is importing while the video is missing. No matter how many times you try it, still will not import the video. You can even try different methods for importing the file, but only audio is importing, not the video. This happens because the video track option has been accidentally turned off. In the timeline panel, you will notice small buttons that control whether video or audio tracks are active. If the video button is disabled, then only the audio part of the clip will be added to the timeline. The same applies to audio as well, so if audio is turned off, only the video will appear. Always check these track buttons whenever you face this issue. The next one is how to easily find effects. In DaVinci Resolve, if you search for any effect, you might notice that sometimes it does not appear in the results. This is because the search is only happening inside the folder you currently have selected. For example, if you are inside the OpenFX folder and search for blur, it will show you blur effects. 
This can be irritating because you end up clicking through multiple folders trying to remember where a particular effect is located, and sometimes you even forget which category the effect belongs to. The good news is, there is a very simple way to fix this. Next to the search bar, click on the small arrow and choose All Folders. Once you enable this option, the search will include every category like OpenFX, Transitions, Titles and Generators. Now when you type Blur or any other keyword, you will get all the available results across every folder. This makes finding effects much faster and saves time during editing, so always make sure this option is turned on. The next one is Subtitle Tags. If you have ever created subtitles in DaVinci Resolve and then exported them, you might notice that they work fine, but when you open the subtitle file, it shows bold tags at the beginning and the end of each subtitle line. This can be quite frustrating because you then have to go through every line and manually delete those tags, which takes unnecessary time. Luckily, you can avoid this problem right from the start. All you need to do is select your subtitle track and open the inspector. Inside the track settings, you will see the font options. Change the font style to regular, for example, choose Arial Regular. Once you do this, the bold tags will no longer appear in your exported subtitles and everything will be clean. Keep in mind the font you choose here does not actually affect the final playback because most video players apply their own subtitle font. Next one, and I really hate this one, that you are not able to import some files. I have downloaded a few clips from the internet and when I try to import them, only one video works while the other refuses to come into DaVinci Resolve. Even if I try again or use drag and drop the file, just will not import. At first, this looks like a bug, but the real problem is with the file naming. If you check the file name closely, you may notice strange characters or even emojis in the title. For example, I had a small headphone emoji in one of my file names and Resolve could not read it. This happens a lot with videos downloaded from YouTube or other sites. Resolve is unable to process these and blocks the import. The fix is very simple. Just rename the file and remove the emoji or any unusual character. Once you do that, the clip will import normally without any issues. So always check your file names first whenever you face this importing problem. The next one is audio coming from left or right side. Now this can be a deal breaker for editors because in Premiere Pro I never experienced this problem but in DaVinci Resolve it happens quite often. Great, I am renaming both of the nodes for better organization. And when I play it, the sound only comes from the left channel. Obviously this is not what we want so let us understand why it happens and how to fix it. The issue is related to the audio track type if you check closely, a stereo track is labeled as Stereo 2.0, which means it contains both left and right channels. To fix this, make sure you keep your mono audio on a mono track. Simply create a new track and set its type to mono, then place your clip there. This way, the audio will play equally on both left and right channels. It is also important to match stereo audio with stereo tracks and mono audio with mono tracks. Once I accidentally placed a stereo music file on a mono track and the result was terrible, even though I did not notice it at first. So always be careful with this setting in Resolve to avoid such mistakes. And the last, easily transform any selected layer. Here, I have a lower third on my screen, and if I try to resize it by dragging, nothing happens. The only way to change it at this point is by adjusting the values in the inspector, which works but takes more time and feels inconvenient. The quicker solution is to enable the transform option. Once you turn it on, an outline will appear around your selected layer. Now you can simply click and drag the layer to move it anywhere on the screen, or grab a corner to scale it up or down instantly. This makes adjusting the position and size much faster compared to typing values manually. You can even rotate the layer by dragging, though I personally prefer using the rotation angle value for more precise control. And last, we have a bonus tip. Suppose you have a video file that already contains audio, but you do not want to keep the audio in your edit. Normally, the common method is to right-click on the clip, choose Unlink, then select the audio and delete it. This method works fine, but it takes a few extra steps every time. There is a faster way to do this. In the toolbar, you will see a small link icon. By default, it keeps your video and audio linked together, but if you simply click on this icon, it will disable the linking. Once that is done, you can directly select the audio track and delete it without going through the unlinking process. If you found these tips useful, consider subscribing because I will keep making more helpful content like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.